Hey, good morning, Word of Faith family. So excited that you joined us for service. Uh, we're about to get into today's message, but before we do, I wanted you to know that we are taking steps to reopen the church and gather in person again. Uh, as we said last week, we've been having some cleaning days, getting ready to get things out of the church so that we can start renovations, and we are taking steps closer every single week. We don't have a date yet for when we're going to reopen, but I'm telling you right now, the day is coming and it's coming soon. I want to thank all of you, not only those of you who've helped on the cleaning days, but even those of you who've been giving uh, financially to see God's mission and his vision accomplished here in the St. Louis community. Thank you so very much. We're excited about what God's going to do here. We're renovating this building so God can renew the lives of people. Uh, for today's message, we're going to do something a little bit different. This is actually a message that I preached at the previous church that my family and I got to be a part of. It was Life Church, uh, located in Oklahoma City, which and now they have uh, over 30 locations around the nation, uh, the creators of the Version Bible app as well. I was able to serve on staff there for about nine years. And the message that you're going to see today is what my first message as a campus pastor there where I served for about two and a half years. And this message is about God's miracles of provision. I know 2020 has been quite a year, but in this message, I'm praying that God will remind you that no matter what you may be facing, he's still a God of miracles and he's still a God that provides for his children. So check out this message. May God bless you with it. Yeah. Thank you all so, so very much. If I haven't met you, my name is Will Coleman. I'm the pastor here at Life Church Broadway in Britain, and it is an honor to share this stage and this message with our senior pastor, Craig Groeschel. And I just want you all to know this, whether it's your first time with us or this is your church home, the man that you just saw on the screen, he is the same way on stage as he is off the stage. He loves God with his whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. He loves his wife, Amy, his kids, and he deeply loves for and cares for each and every one of you that are here today and you're part of this church. And I'm, I can tell you right now, I am a better follower of Christ. I'm a better husband, father, pastor, and man because of Pastor Craig's example. And I'm so thankful for him. I also want to take a moment to honor my beautiful wife, Davina, who's here in the service with me. Thank y'all. I'm not going to ask her to stand up because she's going to be mad at me when we go home. So she's here. I love you, sweetie. My, also, my daughter, my oldest daughter, Hadassah, is here in the room supporting daddy here today. And then a few other family members. My mom is here from St. Louis, Missouri, came down to support me. Thank you, mama. And then my mother and father-in-law and nieces and nephew from Texas came up to support me as well. So I am amongst family and then all of you here today are family as well. Now, 1130, this is the last service. I've preached this message two times already. It's the last one I'm going to get to preach today. So here's what I'm going to tell you. If you feel the notion to say amen... Hallelujah. You want to clap your hands. You can do that. I like that. I will talk back to you. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. So we're talking about God's miraculous provision. And I thought we'd start off with the story that really exemplifies that. So there was a woman who was a single mom of four kids. And she had come upon some really hard times where just financially she was really strapped and she didn't know where the next meal was going to come for, from for her and her kids. Now, what you have to understand about this lady, even though she was among, on tough times, she was a praying woman. And when she would pray, y'all, she would really pray. And she could pray loud, like she was praying really loud. She would say, Lord, God, you are my provider. And I know of anyone that can provide food or anything that we need, God, I know that it is you. You know my kids need food. You know we need to eat. So, Lord, I'm coming to you right now. Provide the food for us in Jesus' name. Now, she would, you have to understand, she would pray so loud, her neighbors could hear her, y'all. They could hear this woman. And she had one neighbor who he hated God and all things that came along with it. And he heard her pray this one night. So he said, I am going to prove to this woman that her God is not real. The next morning, he got up early. He went to the grocery store, bought all these groceries, put them at her door, knocked on the door and ran and hid. 
She came to the door. She was like, oh, Lord Jesus, thank you. I prayed that you would provide the groceries, and here they are. You are so faithful. Thank you, Jesus. And her neighbor jumped from out these bushes and was like, hey, your God didn't provide that. I bought those groceries. He's not real. What do you have to say? She looked at him looked at the groceries and she said, Lord, Jesus, thank you. Not only did you provide me with groceries, but you had the devil pay the bill. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> what I love about that story is that it shows that God has so many ways he can provide for us. And he may even have folks that don't like you or your God do that as well. Matter of fact, scripture tells us this. In Philippians 4:19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Our God is the giver of all good things. And when he provides for us, you all, he doesn't just provide a little bit. The Bible says he provides exceedingly, abundantly more than we could ever ask, think, or imagine. But if you notice, the scripture is pretty clear. It says that God will provide our needs. It does not say that God will provide our wants all the time. And there is a big, 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 big difference between our needs and our wants. Can I get an amen in here? Amen. Right? You, we need clothing. What you want is a, a designer handbag or the new Air Jordans, right? That's what you want. Come on, somebody, I hear you over there. She's like, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I want that. What we, what we need is rest. What we want is an all-inclusive vacation at a resort or with our hotel room overlooking the ocean, right? That's what we want. What you need is shelter. What you want is Chip and Joanna Gaines to fly all the way up here to Oklahoma City and fix her up your house. And you can go, oh, wow, when they pull the, y'all know what I'm talking about. That's what you want. That's what you want. But God doesn't say he's going to provide that. He will provide you your needs. There's a big difference. And so if our God will provide our needs, then we should look at today how our God goes about supplying this miraculous provision. And if you're taking notes, there are three principles to God's miraculous provision. And the first one is this. When God guides, he always provides. Always always provides. Isaiah 58 says it so well. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land. Once again, God will provide your needs. It doesn't say God's going to provide for all of your wants, likes, dreams, and desires, even though they may be really good things. It doesn't say that he's always going to do that because sometimes our dreams and our wants and our desires do not line up with God's will for our life. The Bible says that everyone has a plan for their life, but it's the the Lord's purposes that are going to prevail. So God is always going to provide for his will and his plan for your life. If there are needs that are according to his plan and his will, he's going to provide them. Now, I hear you. Some of you may be thinking right now, okay, pastor, that's good, fine and dandy, but God is not coming through for me. God knows that I need my car payment paid for. God knows I got a house payment. God knows I need a vacation, and I'm still paying off Christmas from 2014. Where is God at? I don't see him. Here's the thing. We need to recognize that God may have provided for all of your needs, right? But maybe, just maybe, you and I spent it on our wants. Hmm. Not always, but just maybe that's what happened. And we have to understand this, is that God's provision for us is not a get out of jail free card for the bad and stupid decisions that we've made financially. Can I get an amen up in here? I see some, I see some folks going, that was me, Pastor. That was me. I'm paying right now. Anyone ever had a gym membership and signed a contract knowing good and well you weren't going to show up at that gym and you wanted to get out that contract and you were like, can y'all let me out? And you read the fine print, you ain't getting out of that contract for three years. No, that was just me. Okay, all right. Well, let's go ahead in our message then. Praise God. Well, the good news about it is this, is that when God guides you, he will always provide for you. When he is guiding you, 
He will provide for you. And there's a great example in the book of Genesis. It's the story of Abraham. And Abraham uh, was a man who God gave him a dream. And that his dream, the dream said this, is that he would be the father of many nations. But when God, when he had this dream, you all, he had no children. So how in the world are you going to be the father of many nations when you don't even have a child of your own? And he and his wife, Sarah, there was nothing that they wanted more than a son. So they prayed and they waited, prayed, and waited, prayed and waited some more. And finally, when Abraham was 100 years old and his wife, Sarah, was 90, they had a son. Can you believe that? 100 years old and 90 years old? I hope that those of you here that are having trouble having kids, that this brings you hope, that God is a provider. Keep believing, keep praying. God is a provider. So here they are, 100, year old, 100 years old, and Sarah's 90, and they have a son, and they're raising their son Isaac. Life is going well, and then here comes the Lord, and he says, Abraham, I know you wanted your son so much, but here's why I, I need you to do something for me. I'm going to put you to the test. I want you to sacrifice your son to me. Now, I know some of y'all are like, what? Listen, you need to read the Bible. There are some amazing stories in the Bible. Now, at this time, what we have to understand is this, is that sacrificing children was not common at that time, but sacrificing animals was. So Abraham is like, okay, um, God, you know I prayed for my son all this time, and now you're telling me to, I got to do what now? Okay, okay, Lord, I'm going to trust you. Because obviously, I waited this long, and you provided me a son at 100 years old. I'm going to trust you with the son that you've given me. So he takes his son. Imagine this. He and his son, young son, are climbing up this mountain. And his son has seen his father sacrifice animals before. So he looks at his dad and says, Daddy, where is the sacrifice? And his father, Abraham, looked at him and said, Son, in Genesis 22:8, God himself will provide the lamb. Now, Isaac doesn't know he's the sacrifice. They get all the way to the top of this mountain. And Abraham is strapping his son that he's prayed for, that he's wanted, that God provided for him. And he's like, I trust you, Lord, even if it hurts me so much. And what we have to understand is that a lot of time when God guides us, it's not just go here, do this, take that job, but it's him testing us through the things that we really want. And he had his son, and right before he's about to do it, an angel comes down. Whoa, 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 Abraham. Woo, got her just in time, man. Do not kill your son. Matter of fact, we know that you fear the Lord. What I want you to do is just look over there. Abraham looks over, and in Genesis 22, 13, it says this. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket, he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place, the Lord will provide. How in the world was Abraham able to do this, to be willing to sacrifice his own son when he wanted it so much and God had provided it for him because Abraham was fixated on the will of God and not on his own wants and desires. And sometimes we're not like that. We are more fixated on what we want and what we don't have than on what God's will and and, and provision for our life. And what we have to understand is this. If we pursue God's will, his provision will follow. When we say, okay, here's what I want, but Lord, I'm going to chase after what you want, his provision will always, always, always follow you. I know this to be true uh, about... Uh, 13 years ago, my, uh, I had just pr- proposed to my then girlfriend, now my wife, Davina, and we had about a year long engagement. And at the time, church, I, I had a really good job. I was a couple years out of college. I had a really good job. I mean, really good job. I was getting paid a lot of money. And our plan was I was going to work for another eight months and move to Tulsa where we were going to get married. We were going to live and we were going to save two of my paychecks every month so we could pay off our honeymoon. And then we would have a lot of money left over so we could start our life together. That was my plan. And I'm praying one day and I can't tell you all that it was the audible voice of God, but it was pretty close. And there was I just knew it. God told me, move to Tulsa. Don't go back to your job. 
And I'm like, uh, Lord, you, 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 you see my paychecks, don't you? <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know about that. Like, okay, maybe if I, if I do that, you'll provide me with a job that pays way more than this. And God just said, trust me. Trust me with your job. Trust me with where you're going to live. So I move, I tell first, I tell Davina, and she is not with it, y'all, whatsoever. She looking at me like, you crazy? We about to get married. And I said, just, just trust me on this. Trust me. I don't get it either, but just trust me. I'm trusting God. So I move back to Tulsa. The only person that knows I'm in this situation is her. I don't tell anyone else. The first job I applied for you all, I got the job. But I was making a tenth of what I made in my other job before that. And I'm like, for real, God? Like... I don't even have enough to get like food and gas with this job. And I, I can't get an apartment on my own. I need like seven roommates to even be able to afford an apartment. So get the job and God's provision because when God guides you, he always provides. I had a friend call me one day and said, hey, Will, this is going to sound really weird, but God put it on my heart to pay for your gas for the next two months. Say, so, uh, hello? <laughs> for real? I had another, a bunch of other friends that just would randomly give me gift cards to restaurants and the grocery stores to where I never lacked a meal, not once. But here's the kicker. Didn't tell anyone about my situation living. I was just crashing on my friends, yeah, my friends' apartments on their couch. I never told them I'm staying in town. I just said, yeah, I'm just in town, man. You know what I'm saying? Just, just visiting, y'all. Not, I'm not homeless. I'm not telling you that. And I was at church, and it was a, we had a prayer meeting at my church, and the assistant pastor, who I'd only had a few conversations with, comes up to me at the end of service, and he says, Will, this is going to be really weird, and don't get freaked out. But God put on my heart to open up my home to you. He don't know I'm homeless. Not only can I, am I opening up my home to you, but you can live there rent-free until you get married. <laughs> you see this face? This is the exact same face I had when he told me that. And I'm going, how in the world did all of this happen? What I wanted was to go back to that job where I was making a lot of money and then just stack that paper, you know, and get married. But God had a completely different plan for my life and his provision followed it. And I don't know what it is for you. Maybe God's calling you to start that business, to write that book, to adopt. I don't know what it is. Maybe he's called, maybe even telling you to move to another city. I don't know. But if God is guiding you, his provision will always follow you. Will you trust him and be fixed on your, his will rather than yours? When God guides, he always provides. The second principle, if you're taking notes, is that God miraculously multiplies what is given. Miraculously. Sometimes God will do it all. He sent a big fish to save Jonah. Saved him. The Israelites had no food. Manna just started falling from heaven. He did it all. Other times, though, God wants to build your faith. And he invites you to be a part of the miracle that he wants to do in your life. Now, how does he do this? He asks you to give, and then he multiplies what you give. He'll multiply you heard the story earlier from Pastor Crick. There was a widow who, her and her son, were about to die. All she had was a small jar of olive oil. And she started pouring it and filled up all of these jars so her and her son were, were fine. But when did God multiply it? When she poured what she had, when she gave what she had. When Jesus fed the 5,000, when did the miracle happen? Was it after everybody was full? No. The miracle happened when that little boy gave that two-piece fish dinner from Captain D's. When he gave it to Jesus, God multiplied it and was able to feed thousands of people. Abraham, the father of many nations. When did he become the father of many nations? Not after he had all these descendants. When he was willing to offer up his one and only son. When you give, God will multiply what you give. Now, what I don't want this to sound like, church, is some prosperity gospel. Please, this is not what I'm saying. I am not telling you right now, in the name of Jesus, if you bring up $100 to this stage right now, God is going to bless you with a 10,000 square foot home and a luxury, a luxury SUV. Amen? Don't say amen. Don't do it. 
I know some of y'all were like, yes, that's what I want, but that's not at all what I'm saying because that's not how our God provides. But what I am telling you is this, is that scripture is crystal clear that God miraculously multiplies what you give. Miraculously, he will do it. 2 Corinthians uh, 10, 9 verse 10 says this, this generous God who supplies abundant seed for the, to the, for the farmer, which becomes bread for our meals, is even more extravagant toward you. First, he supplies every need plus more, abundant. Then he multiplies the seed as you sow it. Not after, but as you sow it, as you give it. And this actually principle goes all the way back to the tithe, which actually predates the law. Jesus actually confirms it in the New Testament and it still applies to us today. And one of the best ways that we can show that God is our provider is by worshiping him, by giving him the first of what he has blessed and entrusted us with. You remember when you didn't have a job and you prayed for that job and then he provided you with that job? He gave you that job. The earth is his and everything in it. So what he's saying is, I bless you with that job, and I return the, the, first, the, the first tenth, because that's what the tithe is, the first 10% of what God has blessed you with, bring it back to him. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, Pastor, whoa, hold up now. I'm struggling off the 100% I'm bringing home. How in the world you expect me to live off of 90% by giving God 10? And I'm with you on that. I understand. But here's what I want you to know. This is the one of the few areas in Scripture where God says, if you don't believe me, test me. Test me at this and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven if you test me with the tithe. Test me. He says he'll do it. And God can do way more with the 90% than we can do with the 100%. And I know this to be true because it happened in my life. Some of y'all are like, of course it happened in your life. You a pastor. Well, I have not always been a pastor. I've only been a pastor here six months. I've only been a pastor maybe five, six years. Before I was even a pastor, I saw God do this in my life. At that time, my wife and I had been married a few years, and we, were, um, we had a lot of college debt. Anybody got college loan debt? Anybody? Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. We had a lot of it. We went to a private Christian school, and we were... If I said we were struggling, y'all, that would be generous. Like, we were straggling, straggling. Like, we were like, we don't know how we're going to be able to make it day to day. So we said, you know what? We're not going to tithe. We cannot tithe. We'll give God a, a couple dollars here or there, but we can't tithe. We can't do it. So for six months, we decided we're not going to tithe. We're not going to do it. In church, for the next six months, every month, insufficient fund notices from our bank. Every month. So six months went by, we looked at each other and said, well, we already broke as a joke, we might as well give God a try, right now. <laughs> Can't get any worse, we got nothing anyway. So let's give God a try. And we actually tithed for the first time in six months. In church, at the end of that month, we had $50 left over. $50, now you may be thinking, $50, that ain't nothing. Well, when your bank account has, been, has nothing in it and you've been getting insufficient funds, $50 is a whole lot of money. But what I don't want you to get caught up is in the, the, the amount. What I want you to see is how God miraculously multiplied what we gave. We were straggling and God provided. But not only did he provide financially, our marriage got better because we started saying, well, wait a minute, if we can trust God in this, we came together on this decision. What if we come together on all of our decisions? God began to give us wisdom because the Bible says he'll open the floodgates of heaven, not the floodgates of a bank. It says the floodgates of heaven. So blessings are going to come in so many different areas beyond your finances. We got wisdom. We started saying maybe we should get out of this apartment that we're paying way too much money for so we can actually continue to honor God with the tithe. We moved out of there. And so I want to encourage you here today. You start tithing. I'm not telling you you're going to get money. What I will say is this. You may not be in the biggest home, but you you may have health in your body and in your kids' bodies. What I am telling you is this. You may not have the the highest paying job, but you know what? You have great relationships, strong God, life-giving relationships. God wants to miraculously multiply what you give. And he says this. If you trust me in this area, I'm going to bless you in so many areas that are way beyond your comprehension. I know this to be true because God's faithfulness has been shown even here at our church. Twelve years ago, some of you have heard this story, our church was making it paycheck to paycheck. And we were about to start selling our resources so that we could bring in income. 
And God put it on the heart of Pastor Craig and our directional leadership team, rather than selling our resources, to give them all away. And that was the seed that then God then and took and multiplied church to where 12 years later, our church is 100% debt free. We're able to invest extra, with extravagant generosity in communities across the, 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 the country and the globe. We've been able to give hundreds of thousands of free resources to churches all over the planet. Over 300 million people have been able to download the YouVersion Bible app for free, having God's hands, God's word in the palm of their hands. We're launching more life churches in cities all across America. Omaha and Katusa were the most recent ones where lives are being changed all the way to right here at Life Church Broadway in Britain. We're almost four years after we've launched. We've seen nearly a thousand people commit their lives to Christ. Lives are being changed. We've been able to help people who are moving out of incarceration to help them get reacclimated in society. We've been able to partner with North Highland Elementary down there to impact students' lives and their families' lives. And in just three weeks from now, we're gonna have a block party in the neighborhood right behind us, for all for free because we want the, the community to know we're not telling you to come here. We're the church, we're gonna come and love and serve you. And we're able to do all of this because God multiplied what you gave, what you have given. In every story of need, there is a miracle of provision. If God can do this for Abraham and that widow, if he can feed the 5,000, if he can do this in my life, he can do it for each and every one of you. When God guides, he always provides. And God miraculously multiplies what is given. Let's pray, church. Lord, there are those today that need your miraculous provision. Maybe it's in the area of their finances. Maybe it's in their family, their relationships, or in their health. God, your word is true. I know this message was about finances, but I know that where you guide, you provide in many different ways. And you miraculously multiply what we give. And so those of you who've given their lives to you, Lord, God, I pray that you would multiply blessings, health, strength, and love in their lives. God, I do pray that in their lives that they will honor you with the tithe, that they will give offerings, Lord, that they will trust you in every area of their life, Lord, because you are Jehovah Jireh, their provider. Bless them this week as they take steps to return the tithe, to give to you. But don't just bless them there. Bless them in every aspect of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to continue praying. There are those of you that you don't know Jesus yet, not just as a provider, but as your Savior. And one of the points that we talked about was that God multiplies what we give. That's not just finances. That's including your life. I want to tell you what Jesus did for you and then tell you what happens when you give your life to him. You see, God loved you so very much that he gave. He gave his one and only son, Jesus, to live the life we couldn't live, to die the death that we all deserve to die because of our sin. And he became our sin. And because he gave his life on a cross, died for us, was placed in the tomb and rose from the dead. Guess what? We are multiplied into a relationship with God. Now the sin that separated us is gone. And now we are brought together with God and he can multiply peace. He can multiply forgiveness and mercy and love. All that you need is provided through Jesus when you surrender your life to him. And so today, today is a day for you to give your life to the one who gave his life for you. And when you do this, he will take away the sin. He will take away the shame. He will make you strong and he will give you peace that passes all understanding and everything that you need for life and godliness. You will have it when you surrender to Jesus. And all you have to do is call on his name. And if you're ready today to call on the name of Jesus, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Now, it's not this prayer that saves you, but it's your belief in Jesus. When you believe in him and call on his name, he will enter into your life and make you brand new. So everybody, a word of faith, let's pray together. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead and he's made me brand new. 
God, fill me with your spirit and teach me to love others the way that you love me. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's celebrate, church. God is so good. Lives are being transformed.